Pakistani attorney and activist Nigat Dad is the executive director of the Digital Rights Foundation, which strives to educate that country's internet users, particularly women, to protect themselves from cyber harassment. She was recently a co-organizer of the 2019 March 8th Women's March in Lahore. For her efforts, she received a massive backlash, including death threats. But that is not stopping Nagat. She is here in New York to fill us in on the new women and girls' rights movement that is emerging in her country. It's not the first, but it is different in interesting ways from what's gone before, and technology is playing a big part in it. Nagat, welcome to the program. Thanks for making a moment to come over and talk with us. Thanks for having um, me. Fill us in a little bit. Why digital rights? Why are digital rights so important in Pakistan? I started working on digital rights uh, back in 2009 when I was actually practicing my law. And uh, lots and lots of women who started using technology, mobile technology wasn't that big, and people who had access to uh, information and communication technologies were mostly men. Uh, uh, so women who were using technology that time, they uh, faced a lot of uh, discrimination and backlash in the sense that men were bugging them or sending them unsolicited messages and stalking and harassment. So as a lawyer, one started reaching out to me that do we have any uh, legal remedies around this kind of uh, uh, violation of our privacy? And when I started looking into the laws and policies, I couldn't find any. Mm. And I was like, where, so, you know, like, what, sh what, what should we do? Because this is going to be the space where women are, you know, like exercising their right to free speech, exercising their access to information. And given how Pakistan is in terms of, you know, like a conservative uh, society, not many women has access to uh, public spaces. Mm -hmm. So technology basically gives them the space where they can show solidarity to each other. To uh, It's like an economic empowerment to them as well. What proportion of women have technology, access to technology? Or when we're saying technology, are we talking about cell phones, basically, mobile phones? And, and why is that so, so important? So when we say technology, I meant to say online spaces as well. So mobile phones, but also uh, social media platform and internet. So Pakistan is a country of more than 200 million people. Uh, and half of the population is, they are, they are women. But we have no data that how many women has access to uh, mobile phone technology or internet. However, uh, we know that mostly people who access online spaces and mobile phones are men. Mm. I mean, I've heard stories of men denying women the right to even have a phone. So, uh, I mean, my personal experience, yeah, uh, when, when I was a law student uh, in 2002, uh, I was going to the university, and it was also a time when lots of suicide bombing was ha like were happening in different cities and stuff. Uh, and um, when I asked my family to give me access to mobile phone, because you cannot have it yourself, you have to ask your male guardian. Uh, so your male guardian could be your father, your brother, or your Wait, husband. Can we just back up there for one second? So the, the phone is not accessible to you if you don't have an approval from your male guardian, if you're a student or if you're anyone? I mean, oh yes, I mean, back then, uh, and you uh, you cannot have it without their permission. Uh, and that was the case with me. So when I asked, I couldn't get permission. So I, I used to go to the university without having any access to the mobile phone, whereas the male family members, uh, my, my family members had access to mobile phone. Things have changed, by the way, a lot, but it's not because it's our right like equal right to access to technology. It's because the security situation where families want that if women are going out or they are going to the universities or colleges or schools or to the works, workplaces, they, they can get in touch with them in case of a security situation. You've made the point, I, I saw a TED talk that you had given where you talked about digital rights are human rights, women's rights, freedom. Um, language that we don't always associate with with our access to, to cell phones. This sort of agenda, or this part of the story, became very visible at these women's rights marches this year. Do you want to talk a bit about how the marches and demonstrations of today and this women's movement of today is different from what went before? 
Um, so I, I'll talk a little bit about Pakistani context, Go for instance, for uh, the uh, older movement, the feminist movement in Pakistan back in 1980s in the era of a dictatorship. When they did demonstrations, uh, their uh, way of demonstrations were mostly on the roads uh, and in the public spaces and showing different acts of resistance. And of course, back then there was no technology uh, or if there was like people didn't have much access to it but now what i have seen uh, one thing that we that we we face the criticism from our older uh, feminist movement is that oh we came out on roads and we did resistance and our demonstrations have, were more solid than the new generation who are sitting on their couches and doing clicktivism uh, but now what i have seen is that uh, people who have access to technology they are making difference in a sense that they are doing activism in the online space however I strongly feel that that activism need to be connected with the offline activism as well and that's something that we have seen in this uh, recent um, Aurat March Aurat is a Urdu word for women's march and uh, and I wasn't expecting as a co-organizer that thousands of women will come out on road because that never happened in the history of Pakistan. Even the older feminists who joined the march, they were very, they were pleasantly surprised. And they were like, we are, we are now very optimistic that our future is bright, that lots of women and including men, they came out on road and they were also the people who were using technology, so, uh, online media platforms, and you know, um, they use it every day for their, you know, like activism and feminism. So let's take a look at some of the footage of what happened this March in Lahore. Take a look. Today's rallies is that lots of laws have been passed in favor of women. We went through a very dark period under General Zia where very uh, many anti women laws were passed. One of them was that if you cannot prove rape, then you will be accused and punished of adultery. So uh, there was an overturn of those laws. However, they have not been implemented. Many pro-women legislation has not been implemented because of the mindset. We had this week a federal minister repr reprimand Bilawal Bhutto Zardari for using his mother's last name. So obviously, standing in parliament, even the policy makers, they need to rethink their approach to women's rights and to uh, what women uh, really stand for in this country. So I think today Today's rally is saying that recognize the 50% of your population, give us our due rights and change your mindset. Don't think that we are second class citizens. Talk about some of the signs that we couldn't read. What sort of slogans were on there? So uh, there was, you have seen like colorful uh, play cards that women were carrying and lots of them were basically talking about their equal, their right to equal wages, their right to education, right to health. Some of the play cards were uh, very provocative uh, and uh, that's where, you know, like we faced a lot of backlash. Uh, and those play cards basically uh, were talking about a woman's personal agency, their agency over their body, uh, their sexuality rights. And uh, this personal politics have never come out in the public space in Pakistan in the past. Um, and I think that's where when a woman, especially young woman, through those play cards, they basically uh, revealed what they what they feel about their personal spaces so one difference that i uh, i saw in this march and if we look back the past marches or past demonstrations uh, most of the marches are actually against the state brutality mm -hmm. or atrocities or tyranny but this march a lot of young women basically came out in the public space with their personal issues and personal problems and i think that's where the patriarchy uh, just uh, get, you know like got threatened and frightened and that's where we started facing a lot of backlash. And what has that backlash been like? 
so it basically started with uh, uh, with some of the play cards uh, going viral on social media. And uh, when it went viral, uh, me mainstream media channels, they picked up those play cards and did uh, TV shows on them and said that this march was actually not on uh, woman empowerment or around the International Women's Day, but actually it's a Western agenda to spread obscenity and immoral immorality and hurting uh, family values in Pakistan. I bet the word homosexuality got used. Usually it does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you react? I mean, you've been facing death threats. Uh, I don't want to overstate things. You're here doing your work, but it's real, isn't it? So a uh, lot of women, uh, not just me, but lots of women co-organizers. It, it, we only, we not only did a march in Lahore. There, were, there were marches in Karachi, in Hyderabad, in Peshawar, in Quetta, and all the women organizers. They are out there in the online space we, because we have been doing a lot of lobbying and advocacy. Uh, so all of them started getting rape threats, death threats. Women marchers who were carrying these play cards, people stalked them, doxed them, and found them online, and then sent them, uh, you know, these threats. Um, but the worst part was that online threats, like as a digital rights activist, I take them very seriously because in closed societies, they have a very strong connection with the offline violence. Um, and the worst part was that uh, some religious clerics, they recorded videos uh, in their, uh, during their Friday sermons in the mosques, and they uh, urged men that if women are saying that they have, they, that it's their bodies and their agency, then you have also agency over your bodies, so go and rape them. And these sermons are still on the social media, on the YouTube. We have reported them. We have gone to the law enforcement. Nothing has happened yet, uh, and which is very disappointing. What do you do next? Uh, we will do the march next year. <laughs> We will definitely uh, do more uh, lobbying with our working class women because we want to be uh, to make it very inclusive. We don't want to make it just like one off march. It, we want to do it as a movement of young women, uh, young feminists who are not only talking about uh, the uh, politics politics around state uh, inequalities or uh, how state treat their citizens, but also about their personal agency. And that's something we really, really need to talk about more. Nigat Dad is the executive director of the Digital Rights Foundation in Pakistan. I'm glad we've made contact. Let's stay in touch. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. You can get much more information at our website. That is lauraflanders.org.